Hello friends, uh, today we will be dealing with glossopharyngeal nerve. It is the ninth cranial nerve. It is also one of the important nerves and it can be asked as a short note or detailed in your exams. So now let's see about the embryology associated with the glossopharyngeal nerve. Many people might skip embryology but this is an important clue for you to remember the course and relation as well as the muscles or uh, glands that will be supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve. So uh, now glossopharyngeal nerve is a nerve from the third pharyngeal arch. Now what are the muscle arises from the third pharyngeal arch? It is the stylopharyngeus muscle. So uh, this glossopharyngeal nerve luckily only supplies the stylopharyngeus muscle as a motor component and uh, other uh, gland that is arising will be the parathyroid gland, the thymus gland. So this glossopharyngeal nerve will be associated with these two glands and the artery associated is the internal carotid artery and the common carotid artery. Uh, so with the course and relation you should know that uh, this nerve will be associated with these two arteries and then now we'll see the functional components of the glossopharyngeal nerve before going in detail about the functional components uh, we'll see in general what are the functional components of a cranial nerve so with any cranial nerve there is either the motor or sensory and with motor there is gsc general sensory efferent and special visceral efferent gve which is general visceral efferent and then sensory which is general special afferent, general visceral efferent and then uh, special visceral efferent. So these are the motor and sensory components of any cranial nerve in general. Now we will see the functional components of glossopharyngeal nerve in general. I am not going in detail about uh, each and every functional components of uh, cranial nerve because that was detailedly dealt in the trigeminal nerve. Now, uh, now specifically glossopharyngeal nerve. So we can see that there are five components that is GSA, SVA, GVA, GVE and SVE. Uh, GS, now we will start from uh, special visceral efferent that is arising from the nucleus ambiguous. Uh, now SVE, it will supply the stylopharyngeus muscle as I was uh, telling earlier, this is the only motor component and uh, GVE which is general visceral afferent arising from the inferior salivatory nucleus. So GVE it will su uh, supply the secretomotor fibers to parotid gland and uh, they are the preganglionic parasympathetic fibers and then we will go to the GVA which is general visceral afferent uh, arising from the dorsal nuclei of vagus. Now GVA will uh, supply the proprioceptor GVA will supply the pain, touch and uh, temperature from the mucous membrane of the pharynx, tonsil uh, soft palate and the posterior one third of the tongue and uh, now we saw the GVA we will see the SVA which is the special visceral afferent uh, you can see that special visceral afferent is terminating uh, the nucleus tractus solitaris so this SVA will be responsible for the touch, uh, sorry, taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue. And then we have GSA, which is the general special afferent. You can see that it is terminating in the special nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. And uh, that is responsible for the proprioceptive sensation from the stylopharyngeus and skin of auricle. So now that we saw the functional components of the glossopharyngeal nerve, let us see the course and relation of the glossopharyngeal nerve. Now before going into the diagram and visualizing the course and relation, let us see a flow chart so that uh, it is easy for you to remember. With glossopharyngeal nerve, it is a very easy nerve. But the only thing where students might find it con uh, difficult will be the course and relation. So I have made a flow chart and this will be, we will start from where it begins and then we will see how it ends giving out the terminal branches. So uh, glossopharyngeal nerve, it will arise from the, in between the olive and inferior cerebellar peduncle and it will arise from 3 to 4 rootlets and then 
it will form a single trunk it will go laterally forward in the intermediate compartment of the jugular foramen now you know in jugular foramen there are many structures arising from it so a uh, few of which may be the internal carotid artery the jugular vein so and many other nerves and uh, this glossopharyngeal nerve it will come from the intermediate compartment and then after arising out of the jugular foramen it will give two important ganglia which is the superior sensory ganglia and the inferior sensory ganglia the superior sensory ganglia will be smaller whereas inferior sensory ganglia will be larger and uh, with superior sensory ganglia it will still be inside the cranium so uh, and that is why this pink uh, outline to show that this part is inside the cranium and this part is outside the cranium and this inferior sensory ganglia will be just outside the jugular foramen after arising out of the jugular foramen it has to travel in between the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery so uh, it will go parallelly with them and then it will go anteriorly to the internal carotid artery and then uh, it will reach the styloid process so after going uh, anteriorly to the internal carotid artery it will reach the styloid process and then after reaching the styloid process again it has to go in between two muscles which is the superior and the middle constrictor of pharynx so it will go in between these two muscles and then it will join the stylopharyngeus muscle and by joining i am not telling it will fuse it will travel along with the stylopharyngeus muscle and then it will go deep to the stylohyoid ligament so uh, the stylohyoid ligament uh, is strong ligament and then it will go deep into the stylohyoid ligament so and then it will give out the terminal branches now uh, i encourage every one of you to come up with your own mnemonics uh, regarding the course and relation i have come up with a mnemonic where it can be considered like a quest so and then i have highlighted when it has to go in between two structures so you can consider that to be two demons and it has to go in between those two uh, monsters like that and then finally giving out the terminal branches now uh, let us go through the uh, course uh, relations and the branches of the stylopharyngeus nerve this is a diagram showing all those three this is a simpler diagram so that you can reproduce in your exam easily uh, and throughout this video i have chosen simpler diagram so that it will be easy for you and now uh, let us see the course so with the uh, as you can see it is arising from three to four rootlets in between the olive and the inferior cerebellar peduncle and uh, superior ganglion which is just above the jugular foramen now this is a diagrammatic representation of jugular foramen not actually because um, this jugular foramen is a larger foramen where this internal jugular vein this internal carotid artery everyone everything will be exiting from the jugular foramen and now as you can see this nerve is exiting one important point to be remembered here is it will have a separate dura sheath of its own and then after coming out it there is an inferior ganglion this uh, after inferior ganglion you can see that the nerve is traveling parallel to the internal jugular vein and the internal carotid artery and then it is going anterior to it now after coming anteriorly to it it is reaching the styloid process after reaching the styloid process it is traveling parallelly to the stylopharyngeus muscle and then after going deep to the stylohyoid ligament it is giving out branches the terminal branches now let us see the uh, branches of the glossopharyngeal nerve let us uh, begin from the tympanic plexus so with the course i forgot to mention this part of the nerve which is the tympanic branch of the glossopharyngeal nerve now this is a branch that is arising from the inferior ganglion and then uh, it will initially form the tympanic plexus then it will go uh, form a branch along with the facial nerve which is the lesser superficial petrosal nerve where it will form the aortic ganglion and then it will supply the parotid gland now let us see in detail how it goes 
it is uh, leaving the inferior ganglion enters the middle ear through the tympanic canaliculus situated at the bony edge between the jugular foramen and the carotid canal it forms the tympanic plexus over the promontory of the middle ear and then the tympanic plexus gives off uh, the lesser petrosal nerve and then twixt to supply the uh, tympanic cavity auditory tube and mastoid air cells so this tympanic plexus is done it's all now one point to remember here is it is also called as a jacobson's nerve so after this jacobson's nerve let us see the branches here now initially let us begin with the tonsillar branches so this tonsillar branches they will supply the mucous membrane of the tonsil uh, fauces and the palate now this uh, sixth one which is the lingual branch this lingual branch uh, it will supply the posterior one third of the tongue and valid uh, that is the circumvalid papillae and it will convey taste and general sensations now the branch supplying the stylopharyngeous muscle uh, the stylopharyngeous muscle uh, this is the only motor component uh, that is being supplied by the glossopharyngeal nerve and after the branch of stylopharyngeus we'll see the pharyngeal branch the pharyngeal branch uh, it joins the pharyngeal branches of the vagus and cervical sympathetic chain to form the pharyngeal plexus on the middle constrictor of the pharynx and then we have the carotid branch it is also called as the herring branch as you can see it will supply the carotid body and form the carotid sinus this uh, it serves as an afferent limb of uh, preso receptor and chemo receptor reflexes from the carotid sinus and carotid body to regulate the heart beat as well as respiration this uh, this is these are the reflexes that you will be reading in physiology that is the chemo receptor and baro receptor that regulates the blood pressure and heart beat of an individual so this is the course branches and relation of the glossopharyngeal nerve coming to the final part of the glossopharyngeal nerve the clinical anatomy and the applied aspects of glossopharyngeal nerve with the uh, glossopharyngeal nerve there are not many important there are not many important points regarding the clinical anatomy it is just three points which is the lesions the neuralgia and how to test a glossopharyngeal nerve so with lesions uh, any complete lesion to occur is quite rare and a complete lesion is required to elicit any symptom but still we'll see what will happen if a complete lesion occurs first is loss of taste from the posterior one third of the tongue because it is supplying the posterior one third of the tongue and then difficulty in swallowing because it is forming the pharyngeal plexus and uh, then it a uh, loss of salivation from the parotid gland now uh, you know that uh, this is supplying the parotid gland it is forming the secretor motor pathway so this loss of salivation only from the parotid gland will be observed and then gag reflex is loss uh, unilaterally and then we have neuralgia with and then uh, testing of glossopharyngeal nerve so with neuralgia it is quite rare and then uh, if it occurs it is a paroxysmal attack of intraspinal pain in area of sensory distribution in the where the glossopharyngeal nerve is supplying and then uh, for example uh, it can be from the tongue the ear and uh, and also it can be precipitated in the swallowing now how to test the glossopharyngeal nerve if it is functioning properly there are two ways one is uh, eliciting the gag reflex and then the other is by testing the taste sensation from the posterior one third of the tongue now thank you for watching the video please sound off in the comments uh, if you have any doubts uh, thank you